The area between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers is known as the Cradle of Civilization, and for good reason. The first urban population centers were born and raised in this region, as well as their many gods. The Middle East has a long history of inspiring civilizations around the globe. The cradle bears the name of Mesopotamia, the land between the rivers. Over the years, Mesopotamia was home to several cultures – Persians, Syrians, Assyrians, Amorites, Elamites, Babylonians, Hittites, and Hurrians. Still, one culture had to be the first. In the case of Mesopotamia, the one culture that preceded all these civilizations is also thought to precede all the global urban cultures to have existed. This is the ancient Sumerian culture. The Sumerian culture stands atop all the contributions to world history, for it was here that life as we know it was born. While vastly different from the life we witness today, it was uniquely different from the eras before it. In purely practical terms, human life has never changed in such a radical manner. To understand the mythology of the ancient Sumerians, one must realize that the myths of Sumer directly or partially correspond to numerous world myths. Since the Sumerians existed so long ago, it is hard to put every aspect of their culture in a disciplined format. Even though we understand these things, our knowledge is somewhat fragmented. The Sumerian gods, or Dengir, were anthropomorphic beings that boasted immense powers and oversaw a particular aspect of the known universe. Initially, their pantheon recognized seven major deities who decreed the fates of man. One of these deities served as the king. The total number of deities went as high as 3,600 in different eras. As Sumerian societies became increasingly urbanized, their gods started to lose their original associations with the creative order. Here are the top 10 Sumerian gods and goddesses. An or Anuna The earliest Sumerian literature, which dates to the 3rd millennium, identifies four primary deities – An, Enlil, Ninhursag, and Enki. An, also known as Anu or Anum, was the personification of the heavens. He was the divine form of the sky and was the predecessor of all the gods in the land between the rivers. Scholars believe that he was conceived as the supreme ruler of the entire Sumerian pantheon. In Sumerian language, as understood and deciphered by their cuneiform writings, An was an approximation of the English word heaven. It consisted of the space between the sky, known as the great above, where all the sky gods lived. An was a major deity for the Sumerians, but his depictions are clouded by obscure iconography. His son, Enil, was also the subject of people's attention. In later eras, the Akkadians worshipped the god of the sky. King Sargon of Akkad thought highly of An, who he believed helped him during his conquests. His wife was the earth goddess Ki, or Urus, or Antu. The Sumerians believed that An took over the heavens when they were separated from the earth, an act that they believed prompted the genesis of the universe. An makes a brief appearance in the earliest surviving piece of ancient literature, the Epic of Gilgamesh. Ki, or Ninhursan. Ki, the Sumerian god for Earth, was the wife of the sky god, An. According to some versions of the myth, An and Ki were siblings. Researchers question whether Ki was a central deity. There is no concrete evidence of a cult with Ki as the central figure of worship. Ki is sometimes identified with many different figures, including the goddess Ninhursag, also known as Nintu. Some scholars even suggest that the Sumerian mother goddess Ninhursag and Ki were the same figure. Ninhursag is one of the oldest goddesses in all of the Mesopotamian pantheons, excluding primeval entities. She was also the queen of the cosmic mountain, but her names and associations changed depending on the era and the sites and cities where she was worshipped. The people worshipped her as the queen of fertility, who watched over women and children. The recipients of her utmost grace were pregnant women and youths. She was the personification of the ideal mother, and so her personality was kind and charitable. Enki Enki, the god of knowledge and fertility, was one of the four creation deities of Sumer. Since the Sumerians had access to the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, they incorporated them into their mythology just like the ancient Egyptians would mythologize the Nile a few centuries later. Enki was a great water god who filled the two surrounding rivers with water and fish. 
His interaction with water and his understanding of the creative flows of nature allowed him to be associated with wisdom, arts, and magic. He was tasked with supplying knowledge and understanding to the man on the throne. He was the patron deity of the city of Eridu, an ancient Sumerian site found southwest of their city of Ur. The depictions of Enki portray him with a long beard, either seated or swimming alongside fishes. And Lil, who organized the larger plans, tasked Enki with the creation of things. Enki put his heart and soul into every aspect of his designs and creations. Enlil O oh, Enlil, living in the dark void. When Enlil found himself in the black veil of the sky, he asked the moon god, Nana, and the sun god, Utu, to brighten up the scene. He was a supreme deity, responsible for planning the rudimentary principles around which everything in the universe was later designed. He was the king of the foreign lands, which meant that distributing land to the nobles fell under his purview. Some myths ascribe him a violent and destructive persona and called him a raging storm. Others consider him an almost paternal figure who controlled destiny and the fates of people. Consider the god of air. He was on sun and was worshipped in many cities, especially Nippur. This ancient Sumerian city was the special seed of the worship of Enlil. The Babylonians, the Akkadians, the Hurrians, and the Assyrians all worshipped Enlil. The air goddess, Ninlil, was his wife, and the goddess Inanna and the god Nana were among his children. Nana Known by many names, like Nana Suen, Sin, Namrset, and Inbu, the moon god Nana was the son of Enlil and his wife Ninlil. Nana was the patron deity of the grand city of Ur. The people of the monumental city erected many temples for their god. Ur was one of the oldest and largest population centers in ancient history so it is quite clear just how popular Nana was. Cities like Asur, Akkad, and Babylon worshipped him as well. Since he was a major astral deity, his worship started around 3500 BCE and continued over the centuries. As the god of the moon, he protected people from the dangers that came under cover of night. He would bring people good dreams and prevent them from having nightmares. Utu the moon god Nana was the savior deity during the night. His son, the sun god Utu, cleared the darkness and brought forth the light that illuminated the land. By bringing light with him, he allowed plants to grow. Since he was the bearer of good tidings, people believed he emerged from the gates of heaven. He would traverse the skies every day and observe everything. Therefore, he became the symbol of divine justice and truth. His association with the sun made him one of the most powerful gods in the pantheon. Tasked with the supervision of humanity and upholding the moral order, he was the warrior that stood between virtue and sin, between good and evil. Erishkigal As Utu reigned over the skies, the goddess of the underworld, Erishkigal, ruled below the earth. The underworld, known as the Great Below, was the land of the dead. Here, they ate things that were not edible and drank things that did not favor the throat. Anyone who entered this realm could not leave without providing a substitute. The Queen of the Dead ruled over this netherworld. She features in many myths, most notably in the descent of Inanna. When Inanna entered the netherworld, Arishkagal turned her into a corpse. After Enlil and Nana refused to save Inanna, Enki came to her rescue. Inanna Whereas Arishkagal was the harbinger of death, her sister, Inanna, was her antithesis. The goddess of love, fertility, and procreation, Inanna was one of the most important female deities of the ancient Sumerian culture. The epitome of life, she helped propagate sexual drive and brought prosperity to the people through her benevolent acts. Some myths portray her as hot-headed and spoiled, while others show a powerful heroine standing up for justice. She was a fan of battle, and her physical prowess used to shine under duress. Also known as Ishtar, she was the queen of the gods and heavens for the Akkadians. The cities of Asur and Babylonia also had their fair share of Inanna worshippers. Depending on the context, she is considered the goddess of love, lust, war, political power, and of the morning and evening stars. Geshtinana Another goddess of fertility was Geshtinana who epitomized agricultural prosperity and increased the nutritional gains of the soil. 
Agricultural yields and the fertility of the earth from spring to fall were correlated with the worship of the goddess. She also plays a key role in interpreting dreams. One of her most notable moments in Sumerian mythology comes from a poem titled The Dream of Dumuzid. In it, her brother, the rural deity Dumuzid, is taken to the great below in exchange for his wife and Nana's rescue. She was the daughter of Enki and Ninhursak, and she was worshipped in Nippur and Ur. Namu How benefiting to end with the goddess who started it all. Namu, a primeval goddess, is among the oldest deities in the Mesopotamian region. She was the mother who gave birth to the heavens and the earth. The heavens refer to the sun god An, and the earth refers to the earth god Ki. The ancient Mesopotamians believed in the life-giving freshwater that lay beneath the earth. Even the symbol of Namu's name is the same as the one for freshwater, Angur. An and Ki gave birth to Enlil, who separated the heavens and the earth. According to the religious tradition, seven major goddesses stood by as Namu gave birth to humanity. The ancient Sumerians existed around 6,000 years ago, and as such, it may seem that they are of no interest to the contemporary history aficionado. But the history of life on this planet simply cannot be told without mentioning the Sumerians. They laid the foundations for every civilization that has come since then. But they were not the first to seek a spiritual understanding of life. Humans have treaded that line before and since, and will probably continue to tread it as long as life lasts. The more things change, the more they remain the same. In times of clarity, one should humble oneself in the face of history, while understanding that we are nothing but a cog in a big machine. To recall a few lines from the Epic of Gilgamesh, Savor your food, make each of your days a delight, bathe and anoint yourself, wear bright clothes that are sparkling clean, let music and dancing fill your house, love the child who holds you by the hand, and give your wife pleasure in your embrace. That is the best way for a man to live. We hope you like this video on Top 10 Sumerian Gods and Goddesses. If you would like to learn more, check out our book, Sumerians, A Captivating Guide to Ancient Sumerian History, Sumerian Mythology, and the Mesopotamian Empire of the Sumer Civilization. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while they're still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.